I am Natalie Portman. This is Unscripted, and I'm here with Hugo Weaving to talk about our new movie, V for Vendetta. We're going to interview each other using your own questions and some of our own. Um, I will start with the first question. All right, from Edgar Jones from Palm Springs, California. Do you think V's actions are justifiable or somewhat misguided? Well, within the, world of the, within the world of the film, they seem to me to be justifiable because he's living in, a, in an imagined world sometime into the near future. And he's been tortured and abused by particular people in, who are now members of the government. And he is therefore a pretty damaged individual. And there's a vengeful side to him. Well, whatever happens to in your life kind of brings about what you do. So within the world of the film, it's entirely justifiable what he does. So. But he's slightly misguided as well. <laughs> <laughs> and this is from Walt Hubbard in uh, Iowa City in Iowa. What type of debate do you hope V for Vendetta inspires in moviegoers? Well, I think the main thing I hope for moviegoers is that they're entertained. I think that's the prime objective of any movie experience. But, um, but also I think it's got a lot of ideas in it that hopefully will make people think about when, if ever, is violence justified. And like you were just talking about, and, and it's an open-ended question that you could debate for a long time and change your opinion on many times when new things come to light um, in different contexts, I think. Oh, unscripted, Natalie, you have to ask this me an unscripted fun. question. Okay. What's your favorite color? Blue. Why? Dark blue. It's, I look good in it, matches my <laughs> eyes. Brings out your eyes. <laughs> Brings out my eyes, <laughs> my beautiful blue eyes. <laughs> Natalie, this is from Lisa Goodwin. Did shaving your head require much mental preparation or was it just another scene to film? I guess I had to prepare myself to walk in to work with hair and walk out without it. But it was, you know, another, another scene in the movie. But I think the whole imprisonment part was definitely something I I'm asking a little su supplementary question to that. I mean, what was the actual experience of oh, actually having it? I mean, that must have been pretty nice, having your hair... Yeah. shaved off on film because it was happening on camera. Wasn't exactly. It? It it's very be. rare to be experiencing something in real life at the same time as your character. Yeah. So that, that was a pretty unusual experience. And it did feel good it, to rub oh, my hands through. It oh, very nice. it was very nice for me too. It's yeah. <laughs> okay, unscripted me to you. All right, Natalie. Now, you are a very smart girl. Thank you. And um, <laughs> so... Now, I think you speak a few languages, is this right? Could you tell us a little, a little bit about them and how you learnt them and why and how many you speak? Well, the only language I'm like comfortable in, as I am in English, is Hebrew, um, which I was born in Israel, so it was really my first language. But I had to sort of relearn it because I moved at three, so I went back last year to Israel, restudied um, to get back to fluency. And then I speak, you know, passable French and some Spanish and, you know, I try and pick up a few words. Did you pick it, you picked up a bit of German? In, in picked up a little German. You did too, I think. You a just, tiny bit, yeah. Especially menus are always the first but, thing you But learn. someone was, I think Maureen was saying to me today how when you were in Japan recently you were reading Japanese script. Is this right <laughs> or not? I, I took Japanese in high school and I haven't used it since. So when I just went to Japan recently for the for the V Press, I was trying to remember, because we learned all the reading and writing, so I was trying to remember, and I was surprised that it actually was still in yeah. my head a little bit. And do you find, like, learning one, one language is, makes it much easier Absolutely. to Absolutely. I think there's something that gets, like, when you speak two languages from the time you're born, there's something in your brain that makes you able to yeah. pick stuff up a little easier. But it's really exciting to get to talk to people wherever you are. Yeah. It's a great... All right, from Bill Ralston from New York, New York. You are acting in a play right now, Had a Gobbler, bam. Do you prefer film or the stage? Well, it sort of depends on the, on the material, really, and, and also on who you're working with. I guess any experience can be you know, positive or negative, generally. That working in film can help you just to be on stage, mm -hmm. and working on stage can help you to kind of find the essence of something on film and depending on the style of the film 
perhaps highlight that in some, just augment that in some way that's not necessarily purely naturalistic. So right. I, find, I find they really help each other. You know. Oh, I get an unscripted. This is so exciting. Do you find you get different responses with theater and, and film? I guess it works too in your native Australia yeah. and in, in the United States. And obviously you get responses all around the world. Is it, are there any reliable differences, different places? With theater, I haven't done a lot of theater outside Australia. A little bit. I went to the Charleston Film Festival, uh, the Theater Festival, Spoleto Festival once, mm -hmm. and that was an Australian play which w was received extremely well there. And this production of um, Hedda Gabler that we're doing at the moment is an Australian production of a great Norwegian classic. And we had an audience last night and they were incredibly appreciative. Po possibly they were f kind of freer in some way than, than in the Sydney audience. So, wow. um, and yeah, with film, I don't know. Uh, obviously the films like The Matrix are kind of big everywhere. So. Right. But are there different like audience, um, like... Uh like habits, like I know if you traveled in, in different parts of the United States, some people will like scream out in a uh, movie theater and other places it's like oh, if yeah. you cough, no, people I, are like Shh. No, Australia is very, I mean you would have seen films in Australia, it's much sort of quieter and more reserved in a funny way, you wouldn't necessarily think that, but coming to see a, see a movie here, I think it's much more interactive, yeah. you know. Okay, which is your greater accomplishment, becoming a successful actress or completing your Harvard education? I don't know, I mean, both were really meaningful for me. Um, acting I always look at as sort of luck because there's lots of great people who aren't, don't have the opportunity to work and, um, and a lot of you know, not great people who do get the opportunity to work. So um, as much as I you know, really try and work at everything I do, I don't necessarily see it as an accomplishment as much as being really, really lucky. and. Um, and school was definitely a lot more work. Like I definitely, you know, if I hadn't done my work, I wouldn't have graduated. So um, that maybe I can take more credit for, but both were, are equally, you know, important in my life. And they're both part of who you are anyway. Yeah. You can't kind of really divorce one from the other, can you? Yeah, that's true. From Steve Denning in Shelbyville, Illinois. Was making another film with the Wachowski similar or different from what you expected? Well, this is another film that was written by Larry and Andy Wachowski, but they didn't direct it. So in that way, it was fundamentally different. But look, there are similarities in the um, interests, uh, in what, in, in, I suppose, thematically in, in the films and in the way in which uh, Larry and Andy see the world. So from that point of view, you can draw parallels between V and, uh, and The Matrix. Okay, finish this sentence. The three things I love about movies are... I think the main thing I love about movies is that it's like a group experience where you spend two hours thinking about what someone else's life is like, mm. not just being involved in your own thing. And I think that's such a nice thing for people to practice, to look at other people's yeah. daily concerns. Yeah. And I like getting to laugh, which movies... Comedic movies. You're good at laughing too. I, I, I <laughs> laugh easily and often, and I love it. And um, and also, it's sort of I love also when movies. Um, it's almost like traveling sometimes, like mm. getting to see what another place and another existence and another life is like. And that's exciting. Mm. Okay, the three things I love. Well, some like there's probably more than three, but I'll. Mm. Uh, one of the most wonderful things about being involved in filmmaking for me is that you're learning. And I always loved mm -hmm. school, I love learning, and I, I hope that your life, you're always gonna be learning something. So, um, to, oh dear, I'm traveling into the same territory. Being transported, I think. Being transported mm -hmm. into other worlds. And uh, I guess that's something which we all have in common really with films, that, that you hope to be taken somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is... <laughs> you made me laugh, thank you. <laughs> okay, ready? Cut. That's a That's wrap. A wrap. <laughs> That's a wrap. Thank you, Movie Phone. And thank you for watching and sending in your questions. And we'll see you next time.